So there's one thing I've been kind of, uh, I've been researching and thinking about, and that's the uh, clutch master cylinder. And I kept thinking, how does it know the quantity of clutch fluid to push out to make the, the clutch master cylinder, you know, push out the correct length? and uh, you know, move the clutch in and out. I mean, it, I was thinking it has to match um, the total volume of this master cylinder with the slave cylinder. And uh, I got to thinking about that when I, when I was um, sort of testing my clutch pedal here. The, so my clutch pedal, uh, you know, goes in and it actually touches right here. It stops near the floor. So it has a pretty long throw and it stops um, somewhere very near the end of the throw of the uh, clutch master cylinder, but not quite. It actually touches the floor. Um, I started thinking about, is that enough volume? Is it pushing enough volume out of this master cylinder up there to, to actually actuate the clutch? So um, I did a little research and I learned that you can actually get different bore sizes for um, the master cylinder. So that's actually, uh, I guess, making the cylinder in there larger or smaller, which increases or decreases the the volume of fluid that's actually being pushed out and i i thought that that only had to do with the pedal ratio or the, the you know the amount the pedal gets pushed but i guess you also need to match that with your slave cylinder on the other side and you don't of course you don't want to push uh, not enough fluid because it won't actuate your clutch and you don't want to push too much either because you know that could cause problems so um i picked a uh, i think it was a five eighths bore that i selected here and i um i'm hoping it's going to work um i kind of just I kind of just guessed and, and I'm afraid that I might have to change out that cylinder if this thing doesn't push out or I guess if it pushes out too much fluid um, either way. So I'm hoping I'm in that like, you know, perfect like Goldilocks, uh, <laughs> not too much, uh, not not too little, but just right zone there. So, um, so I think now that everything's hooked up, I've got the clutch in there, everything's good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bleed this thing, which um, apparently there's no bleeder on the Challenger, you know, slave cylinder. Instead, you just have to push this thing 200 times. Uh, that's the bleeding method from the factory. So um, let me uh, do a few stretches here. Let me get my leg ready and I'm going to I'm going to go for it. Okay, well, a little bit of uh, good news and a little bit of not so good news. Um, I did manage to get the uh, clutch pedal bled. Um, so the, the important thing first was to bench bleed that Willwood master cylinder. So what I had to do is disconnect the line at the slave cylinder right there coming out of the transmission. And then I just kind of like put it into the cap of this thing here, which is kind of weird, but, and this thing was really like a very tiny reservoir, so it was kind of hard, but I would just, um, you know, kind of hold it into there and then just pump the clutch pedal a few times to um, kind of like get the bubbles out, just like bench bleeding a master cylinder for your brakes. And once I did that, it seemed to um, start to bleed the slave cylinder. Uh, the bad news is though, is it seems like, it seems like this uh, clutch master cylinder I have here maybe is not the correct bore size for this transmission. Um, I, you know, I really searched for the right volume, you know, I tried Googling like TR6060 slave cylinder volume, and there just doesn't seem to be any sort of like online, you know, information. I mean, unless I missed it, I'm not sure, but, but, uh, I, I you know, I found somewhere that said somebody, somebody mentioned a, a five, um, gosh, I don't even remember now. I think it's five eighths bore is what I have here, um, was the right size. And, uh, you know, that's a good compromise of pedal field. You know, the throw is good, but you know, not too, not too stiff, whatever. Uh, anyway, so I had to kind of adjust this thing all the way up, which is way too high. So this is kind of its full bore here. And even at its full swing, which is like a huge swing, um, at the very end there, it, uh, it just barely releases the clutch. 
um, you can actually hear it squeak. I, I think that's like maybe the pressure plate forks or whatever. Yeah, something squeaking in there. Maybe the clutch. Um, that's a nice sound. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Um, I'm just going to change the master cylinder. It'll be the third master cylinder I bought. Of course, the first one was the first one with the integrated reservoir and then this guy. And now I'm going to get a, a different sized one. But, um, you know, getting that bigger bore size will just bump up the quantity. So that hopefully should give it a little bit shorter throw so I can, you know, put this clutch pedal down where it should be right about there. And then just that distance right there should do it. All right, back to the drawing board. So when I first had this idea to run a remote oil filter, I somehow I just envisioned that there'd be like plenty of room, like anywhere on the frame rail over here or something. And, uh, you know, actually it, it is a little bit limited. You know, I saw one person uh, running it like somewhere around here, but you know, it's just, I, I feel like I'm going to hit a bump or something and I'm going to take out my oil filter. So my thought was to, to put the, to put the filter somewhere, you know, something like, something like this. And uh, I think it would kind of look cool there, you know, it's, it's prominent, but it's, uh, you know, it's all business. So I like it um, kind of, uh, it's got a kind of a race car look, you know, or whatever. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with that. So I guess the first step, oh, and I even got some lines made too. So I got these two AN8 lines here. So my idea is to put, you know, these are going to plug straight in. All right, there we go. Uh, I got I got just one plugged in, but you get the idea. So I guess the first step is to make this bracket for this guy, and uh, you know we'll probably have to do a little bit of cutting and welding for that thing, but um, let's get to it. All right, there we go. Got this little uh, this little bracket here, kind of just like a little L shaped that um, bolts right into where the EGR valve was. It plugs the EGR valve, and then this thing whoop, this thing goes right into right into there. All right, got this thing all all set up, and uh, and I like it. Looks cool. All right, let me uh, let me show you what I got going on for the throttle cable here. Since I'm converting this from a drive-by wire to a drive-by cable, um, I'm gonna need to figure out some way to run the cable. So I ended up just kind of looking through throttle cable you know, different options for different cars. And from what I could tell online, this pretty much looks like your standard, like LS style or whatever. Um, it's basically just a, a cable with this little thing at the end, and it kind of plugs in and goes around this sort of circular sort of throttle thing here. Since the throttle body is kind of towards the back of the intake manifold, as opposed to way up here in the front, um, it took me a while to find, to find a cable that was short enough. And uh, so, to, uh, to kind of hold this throttle cable in place. Um, this, uh, this truck manifold actually has kind of a nice little, um, you know, let, me, let me take this bracket off here. All right. So the Hemi actually has some holes here, which kind of give you a few different options for mounting a, a, a bracket for your throttle cable. Uh, basically, I just did the old, uh, you know, cardboard, cut a piece of steel out, and uh, there you go. Um, yeah, it's a little homemade, but I like it. You know, it's very, uh, <laughs> gets the job done. And uh, it's not exactly something they sell for, you know, this particular engine. So uh, there really was no option, but I think this will work good. Um, it even has a little holder here. Once I get this in there, you know, it's going to give a little place for the throttle cable to go. So it's pretty cool. All right, let me drill this guy out and hit it with black paint. Uh, 
All right, so I got these big uh, zero gauge battery cables here, um, which you know goes from the battery and then into the starter. And then the best place to ground the main negative uh, battery cable is also on the starter. So basically I need to um, take these two wires and, and route them somewhere to the starter, which is on the other side. Let me show you here. On the other side of the uh, engine bay, like all the way across. So, uh, you know, the battery is going to be here and um, and I'm kind of on the fence as to whether I'm going to route the battery cables down and around like this or back up here and then around the back. Um, it kind of seems like at first glance the, you know, the better way would be to go around the back. But, you know, space is getting pretty limited here. Um, I already have a lot of wires going around and then the brake area is kind of kind of already packed in. So um, I'm kind of thinking maybe this might be the better way. I don't know, maybe like along the cross member right there, which uh, I, I I would think that that's safe. I, of course, I'll like wrap them up and protect them and all of that. But um, I think the main thing that's keeping me from uh, running the battery cables back there is that there won't really be a lot of clearance with the headers. Um, let me crawl under there and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so here's the starter. Of course, this guy right here. Um, the battery cable needs to plug in right, right there. Um, let's see here, yeah, right there. And I suppose the, the negative side just somewhere in this area, you know, maybe one of these bolts or something. And uh, the, the reality is here that the headers do just kind of pack in this whole area here. I mean, it, the top tube starts right here. So, you know, the, the pipe's gonna come down right here and that's gonna be a pretty close little cut in if I'm trying to run the battery cable back here. I mean, I, you know, I'm trying to think of like, maybe if I run it down here, but I also don't want it to be in any, in any place that it could get hit by anything like coming in from the road. And also, you know, the header pipes, of course, are very, very hot. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe this way might be a better, a better route. I mean, you know, if the header pipes kind of stay, stay up around here, then I can probably sneak in, you know, right down below or something. Um, that's pretty much a direct shot from that thing straight over. You know, kind of bending in here and kind of yeah, so maybe it would connect right there and kind of bend in and around, kind of hug the block here. And over this way, yeah, actually, you know, that's not too bad. Just kind of tuck in behind this uh, motor mount here and then there's a pretty good passage right into the front of the, of the, um, this is the cross member here. So, all right, that's settled. All right, you know what? I just went ahead and put in these headers just to just to give it a double check. And, you know, I, it's probably possible to, you know, sneak those guys through through here. I mean, there there isn't a huge amount of space and it's definitely going to get warm in that little area. But, you know, it's not out of the question. Um, I still think I prefer it to go through the, uh, the front, though. You can see that really it's just like a clear path. I mean, the headers are, are you know... The very end of them is right here, so it kind of, you know, there really is plenty of room to come around this way. Um, I don't know. Gosh, there is, there is some room. All right, I went ahead and ran my positive wire back around this way, and, uh, and then I ran the negative wire this way just to kind of, just to kind of test fit both both routes and you know i think on the starter side both are okay i mean definitely the front way um, this way avoids avoids the headers um a little bit more you know it really doesn't get anywhere near the headers at any point this back way does get a little close but um but i think it's probably okay you know just put some heat wrap on that thing or whatever and so from this sort of point of view both are are acceptable however from the top side from the top side here. I think there is a little bit of challenge over in this area because remember the headers on this side are actually gonna go straight down that way. So this will then be close to the headers over here. Um, and you know, the intake manifold is gonna be right up against the firewall. So it'll kind of be tucked back over there. You know, there's no way to kind of get it up over um, and then over the, the valve cover, you know, I kind of don't like the idea of that. And down here, I mean, it looks like there's plenty of room, but in reality, once I have my power steering lines coming down here, 
this guy is either gonna be like way up over the fender well here, which actually, I mean, I guess I can always get longer cables, but I kind of am running out of room here, you know, and I don't want this cable to be too long either. The shorter the cable, the better in this in this case. So I think I'm probably gonna go with the uh, with the front route. And from this point of view, you know, once they're kind of mounted in there or whatever, you really don't see the wires. So it's not going to look too obnoxious, hopefully. And, uh, and then from this sort of perspective here, there's actually tons of room here for the wire to pass. And I, you know, I don't think there's going to be anything else um, up through here. I mean, this is pretty much wide open. You know, the headers will be, will be up there, um, but way out of the way. So... I think that's probably pretty good. I think we'll go with that. All right, I got my uh, starter wire, you know, battery cable, and also my my starter solenoid cable, the uh, whatever you call it, uh, ran through this uh, wire sleeve right here. Um, you know, just to give it a little bit extra protection and to keep the wires together. Um, I really like this stuff. It's like, uh, it looks good and it, it protects the uh, the wire from a little bit of like, you know, abrasion or whatever. Um, anyway, now as far as the negative cable goes, ideally you're supposed to um, route it right to a like a starter bolt or whatever, but the headers really are just so tight around that starter that I don't think there's going to be any place that I'm going to be able to get that negative battery cable on there. So I read online that, um, you know, basically just bolting it to the block as close to the starter as you can get um, will be okay. And uh, so I got my eye on this bolt right here. Um, and that'll be a pretty short run from the battery to the to the ground right there, you know, just about two feet. So um, I think that'll do. I'm hoping that'll be okay. Um, I guess we'll see. All right, we're looking pretty good here. We got uh, all of the coils plugged in on both sides, and I think I have most of the sensors plugged in. Um, there's a couple, you can see down there, <clears throat> got your crank position sensor and a knock sensor down there. Cam position sensor is important. There we go. Uh, the one sensor that didn't seem to fit is, um, let's see if I can get a, a view of it. There we go. Uh, this guy right here, which is marked oil, so I'm assuming it's like oil pressure, um, and it's just a different plug. This guy is like a three prong, and I have like a one prong smaller plug, so I suppose I have a different oil pressure sensor. I'll, I'll have to look into that. Maybe maybe the truck has a different sensor, you know, and this one's meant for the car sensor, so something to look into, but otherwise we're pretty good. All right, there's the intake manifold on this thing, and I really like this truck manifold. I wasn't sure at first because, you know, everybody has the intake port right here on the front. And, you know, logistically, I don't think this is going to do me any favors being, uh, being so far back. Like, I don't know if I'm going to run a big tube or something like that, but um, it's definitely unique. You know, it definitely looks, looks like it means business, so I like it. I'm always worried that, you know, the Hemis look a little too much like LS engines, you know, with the with the kind of black, like, plastic intake manifold, kind of like, you know, like knuckles over the over the front of the engine. I, I guess that's what all V8s look like nowadays, but um, I really wanted to avoid that, and this thing is definitely unique. All right, let's check this guy out. This is my uh, my new drive shaft, and it looks pretty good. Of course, the uh, six-speed there has a, has a fixed output shaft, so, you know, to kind of facilitate the slip yoke they 
just added a like a middle slip section here. So basically instead of having this this uh, you know slip yoke element here, which would normally be in the end of the transmission, it's just kind of part of the drive shaft and uh, we're good to go. And then to, I guess to adapt this flange here or whatever, they also gave me this adapter, which, you know, this thing fits perfectly into the circle of the uh, TR6060 output. I did ask the guy about uh, this, what, what he thought about the strength of having a, a middle slip element versus, you know, having it in the transmission. And he actually said that maybe this would be even a little bit stronger. Um, I'm not sure, you know, if it's stronger or how much stronger, but um, it doesn't seem like it's any weaker, you know, so that's good. I mean, I guess, uh, you know, we'll see. But uh, he said that, you know, this was actually a, a common setup for a lot of new cars anyway, you know, having the, the slip element in the drive shaft as opposed to in the tail shaft. So, um, yeah, it, it definitely looks solid, you know, it's definitely a, a pretty, a pretty solid piece. Um, cool. All right, let's get this thing uh, bolted up in there. All right, looks pretty solid. Um, clearance looks okay as well. This thing definitely, uh, you can see it's the, you know, when I got it, it was, I guess it was all the way compressed down and now it's, uh, I mean, I'm guessing it's somewhere in the middle. You know, it would make sense that this thing was about, you know, this long or so. And so we're we're in the middle to kind of allow for motion when uh, when the suspension goes up and down, I guess. Um, but otherwise it looks, it looks pretty good. The, uh, the clearance is a little bit tight up here, but I can put my hand around it, so um, I think that's probably okay. I asked the uh, drive shaft people and they said um, that's usually that's usually fine that you're not going to see a lot of uh, movement. And you know since it's towards the uh, the front, that means that you know the up and down movement is going to be way less than back here, which there you know is tons of room because the axle is lower than the uh, transmission tail shaft. Um, around this thing is also kind of tight, but kind of the same deal. I can, I can put my hand around it here, you know, on both sides. So, you know, if it's really going to be an issue, like if I start touching, um, I can always just certainly, uh, I could probably just dent this, you know, because there is this kind of like lowered portion. You can see the bump down right there. So it looks good. 